Today, we will be looking at non-equity options. Options like choices? No, no, no. Options are financial derivatives and are contracts that give the owner of the option the right to buy or sell the underlying asset for a specific price called the strike price. So what are non-equity options? Non-equity options are just like normal options, but the underlying instruments are made up of an asset that isn't an equity like stocks or cash. Wait, I'm confused. What are some examples of underlying assets that aren't stock? Well, actually, there's plenty, including foreign currency options, options on treasury notes and bonds, and options on treasury bills. Oh, I think I've heard of some of those, but I don't know what they are or how they work. Okay, let's start with options on foreign currencies. Wait, currency? That's like money, right? Correct. And foreign means like other countries, I think. So that means foreign currency money is from another country. Exactly. The values of currencies around the world change and fluctuate relative to each other, and this is caused by the laws of supply and demand. This relationship is inverse, which means as one country's value rises, another's falls. And all this fluctuation is caused by both economic and political factors, like wars, elections, inflation, etc. Oh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. But how do options on these foreign currencies work? Well, for businesses that do their business in other countries, there's a very large risk associated with currency since exchange rates are always rapidly fluctuating. Options on currencies help minimize this risk. Contracts for foreign currency options are sold on the Philadelphia Stock Exchange and each contract represents a set amount of foreign currency with a strike price that gives the owner of the contract the right to buy or sell that foreign currency at a specific dollar amount. So like if I had an option on a certain amount of euros with a strike price of say $60, I could buy that amount of euros for $60, correct? Bingo. The option you're describing would be a call option, or an option that gives the owner the right to buy the underlying stock. There are also put options, which give the owner the right to sell the stock. Oh, okay. I think I get it. So, I think a currency's value will go up, I would buy a call option. But if I think it would go down, I would buy a put option, right? That's right. Wow. You learn fast. Next, let's take a look at options on treasury notes and bonds. Okay, so what exactly are those? Treasury notes are debt securities issued with maturities ranging from one year to ten years, and they pay interest semi-annually. Treasury bonds also pay interest semi-annually, but are issued with maturities of over ten years. Okay, so I get it. What they are, but what do options on these securities represent? Well, the strike price on a treasury note or bond is quoted as a percentage of the $100,000 face value. For example, a 100% a 102% option would indicate a strike price of $102,000. Premiums are also quoted as percentages of face value, with every one point on a premium indicating 1% of the security face value. So, an option with a premium of 3 would mean that the option would have a premium of $3,000. Okay, that makes sense. These options expire on the Saturday following the third Friday of the month, and if the option is exercised, the investor selling the security, a call rider or put buyer, has exactly two days to deliver the security to the investor that's buying it, either the call buyer or put rider. Whatever investor receives the security has to pay the exercise price plus 
any accrued interest on the security, just like in normal trading with bonds and notes. Okay, I think I get it. Treasury notes and bonds. I think I get treasury notes and bonds now. But what about options on treasury bills? Well, these are a bit different since they don't pay interest like notes and bonds. However, they are still sold at a discount rate from their face value. So, how do options on these bills work? Well, one option on a treasury bill represents a future issue of the 13-week treasury bill worth $1 million. Wait, so they don't represent the current treasury bill? Nope. So that means an investor cannot be covered when writing a call on a treasury bill. What does covered mean? Well, a, cut, a covered position is when the writer of a call owns the underlying stock of the derivative, while a naked position is when the writer of a call does not own the underlying stock of the derivative. So why can't put buyers have a naked position? Put buyers cannot have a naked position because they have the right to sell the underlying security, not the obligation to sell it. And this is what call writers have, the obligation. Oh, that makes sense. Because put buyers can just allow the option to expire and then only lose the premium, right? Yes, exactly. So call writers of options on treasury bills can only be naked is because the underlying issue of the stock hasn't been released yet, right? Yes, that's it. Put buyers and call writers are hoping that the treasury bills issued close to the options expiration date will be trading at a price lower than the strike price, while call buyers and put writers are hoping that the future treasury bill will be trading at a price higher than the strike price of the option. Oh, okay. So I think I get everything now. I understand what options are, why non-equity options are different, different types of non-equity options, and how they work. Great. Now, I hope you remember to always make smart investments, and also that the reward, might, the reward with options might not be as great as just buying a derivative straight up but the risk is a lot lower as well.